Hello, welcome to my series about old shop and mazurkas. Uh, today we focus on uh, mazurka in A flat major, opus 50, number 2. We continue with opus 50, which, as I said last week, is one of the most sincere opuses uh, of mazurkas written by Chopin. Of course, all the mazurkas are very sincere, but uh, for me, in my heart, when I play them, I feel that they are they are written very deeply from the inside uh, of Chopin's heart in that moment of his life. Let's just let us just listen to a little bit of the Mazurka Opus 50 number 2. nothing there is nothing more <clears throat> nothing new uh, until the end so as, as you could probably notice um, the construction of this mazurka is quite simple it's like a rondo we have part a part b then part a part c and then part a again a b a c a very typical rondo except that part b part c excuse me is longer and it's a typical folk dance, but played piano pianissimo, very, very soft. That's how Chopin asks us to play. Uh, and um, so it, we can consider this part C as a middle part of the mazurka also, if we want. <laughs> but that's not really uh, important. Let's, let's analyze this a little bit. What's the, well, the, the character of this mazurka is not so simple to describe because it's changing. But in general, in, if, I, if I were to use one word to describe the whole character of the whole mazurka, which seems impossible, of course, but, well, why not to try? I would use the word melancholy. Melancholy or żal, Polish żal, so it means sorrow. But of course, it's not only black and white, especially this mazurka, it's not just black and white. There are much more colors 
and it's a true masterpiece uh, with a mixture of emotions. But let's let's look at it from the beginning. Uh, as we can hear, it starts from the introduction. The introduction which brings me in mind a very big clock, a big old clock on the wall. And we can imagine ourselves sitting, sitting in some uh, on the couch, or, um, feeling cozy, and watching the clock, looking at the clock, and w observing and watching this. Well, I don't know the English word. Uh, maybe you can help me in the in, in the comments. The English word of this uh, thing that is you know, is moving left and right and waving left and right in the clock in a very, very slow. When we look at it, we can think about the time passing and we can get into a very philosophical mood of the, our existence even. So it's like left and right, left and right. This is one of the things I have in my mind. Another, when it comes to the character, uh, I always thought, like, for me, this is like, I imagine myself with a, a group of few very small kids. Five years old, four years old kids, maybe five, six of them, seven of them, or maybe just two of them, never mind. And I'm with a book of uh, stories for kids children's stories and I, it's like I'm going to it's like I, I'm sitting with this book and then I tell them so now I open the book and now I'm going to read you a story so it's like this it's now focus I will read you a beautiful story story starts. It's like, you know, long, 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 long time ago, there was a beautiful princess and she was, and she was very lonely because her love of her life was very far away and he got married with another woman. So she got very sad and she was losing her optimism. <laughs> of course, I'm now I'm making up a story. This, this marriage with another woman, it's, uh, I, I took it from Chopin's life. Those of you who know uh, my episode from the former Mazurka of this opus, they, you know that in this time, during this time, Chopin's biggest love and fiancé and uh, Maria Wojinska, she got married with another man. Exactly in this time when Chopin was composing this music. So that's why I just made up, you know, the story of this. But of course, it can be many different stories, but let's just, let's just see the melody, because the melody itself, uh, the melody itself is very uh, interesting. This is a little bit like a mixture of thoughts can you, would you agree with me? It's, it's like a mixture of, there is not one, fo one thought only. We, we have in our mind many different thoughts.
little a little more folk character because uh, until now we don't really feel the folk character left hand has a little bit It's a little bit dance like character but it's really well you cannot play it like this with such a beautiful melody that we have here mm. well you could play it like this but for me it sounds a little bit too cheap it sounds um, too 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 simple uh, for such a for such a perfect melody i mean for such a melody which is uh it goes a little bit up and then down and up has a lot of these curves a lot of these very small details which we want to uh, sing if we consider if we imagine somebody singing this melody then then we uh, certainly would like would love to play it more in the singing way so well, for me also this melody is maybe a little bit like memories. Um, let's just listen again and imagine that this is Chopin who is just recalling something, some memories. Once it was so nice, but now... Especially here, this is like a question, will it come back one day, will it ever come back? Yes, maybe, maybe it will, but we don't know. So, well, I think uh, for pianists, this is not easy to play. This is not easy to interpret. Because as I said again, I said again, if we want to be simple, and we if we if we if we really want to do the mazurka here, then maybe I play it too fast, because uh, in principle this is Kujawiak. And it's absolutely sure that this is a waving Kujawiak. And Kujawiak is a, a slow dance. We have Allegretto here, so I think if we do a little slower... We can even imagine somebody dancing. melody so um, I think it's still not so easy to understand especially if you are not a musician so I will try uh, to make it a little bit more easier to to analyze it so let's listen from the beginning we go up first just go up just to go down immediately so our mood is not determined uh, we are hesitating. The melody is hesitating. And then here, for the first time, we have the mazurka rhythm. Ta 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 ti yam papam. At the end of the phrase, we can say, okay, this is the mazurka. Uh, hesitating. And then dancing. And then. The same melody, the same exactly same melody, um, but in F minor, so in the the minor sister of A flat major, so more sad, right? <laughs> and now what should be here should be the other, another ending. Uh, I will now play like it should have been. Right, 
like it was before, but instead we have the modulation to the beginning. And then we are again at the beginning and we have the same melody, the same melody, but instead of we have so very little change, but there is a variation of the melody from the beginning. And then, and then the, the, the second phrase is taking right. Well, if before we, we went left, now we are taking right and Chopin is bringing us to the new melody. the melody starts to ask King questions, start to ask questions. But these questions are without the answer. One question, the same question but a little bit with different words. And now we go up. But again we are asking questions. So three questions without an answer. Um, well, it's some symbolic, right? Let's listen again three questions without an answer. One. Two. Three. And now we will have the answer. But what an answer? Wow, if the singer uh, would have sing it, ah, it's so difficult for him, for her. With all these ups and downs, ups and downs, right? Uh, I think this ending is one of the most beautiful endings of melody that Chopin ever wrote in any piece of music. And why? Well, maybe it's because it's the answer for three questions. Very interesting. And then after that we have uh, like a folk in a different dance. It's not a mazur anymore. It's not a kuyaviak anymore. It's a mazur. starts from the beginning. So this mazur uh, can be played a little faster than the beginning because it's a different dance. Uh, but it's not really a it's not really a dance like we usually have it's not like that absolutely not like that. So it's like a reminiscence it's like a kind of memory. The dance is in our memory. But nevertheless, it should be played simple. This we have this tension, tension, tension. Can you hear this tension? We we can't stand this tension so much. We want the release finally. Can you hear tension? Tension, 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 all the time tension. So in quietness we are, we want to relax and suddenly we are at the beginning. So this melody, another thing, another thing which uh, comes to my mind and my imagination when I play this melody is a woman, a, a girl, a beautiful woman. Um, I imagine that I just saw some girl walking and I'm just like, wow, what a beautiful lady. 
and I start to look at her and I start to imagine how is she, what is she like, her character, her, uh, her way of behavior, somebody who I just... predictable like a woman right so unpredictable we don't really know where it will go we don't know we cannot predict what her mood will be in one two three minutes uh, but we still adore her we still love love her so that's that's another my imagination which is far from the well the Chopin's or who knows who knows nobody knows after that we have this, the, the part B, the part C actually, but the middle part, which is typical Mazur and it's the obsessive, all the time the same rhythm. And it can be played, um, but I have two ideas of how to play it. One idea is to play it as simple as possible, without any rubato, without nothing at all. To make it a kind of uh, music for dance. difficult to do because you just want to do something but I think it works it works quite well but another idea I have to put some of course folk Polish dancing uh, rhythm but together with rubato uh, a little freedom uh, in the aspect of harmony uh, because they are changing in a very uh, interesting way so more like this second time here we have forte but only for a little bit and again piano so as I said before this is the DNA this is the the Ida fix of opus 50 in all three mazurkas, whenever we have Polish folk dancing, we want to dance. We want to play it forte, but no. Chopin is saying no, no way. Piano pianissimo, mezza voce, silent. Silent, why? Because Poland is far away. Because happiness is far away. Because dancing is far away. Because my soul is lonely. And I don't have a hope. But still, this is Mazurka, so in my, in my heart there is Poland, Polish dances. And this, this is a symbol, a really symbol. Because, because this uh, folk episode comes twice, two times, we have the repetition. It's good, because I can play my both theories, my both ways, I can play them. The first time I can play very simple, the second time I can do the rubato. Let's just listen how it would sound.
are coming back to the beginning. It's the end. And the next mazurka starts from the same note. But about the next mazurka I will talk next week. Thank you very much for listening and see you again. Bye bye. <laughs>